Yeah, boy! Porpoising is the first thing that comes to mind when you think about the big storylines of the season. While it's been a nightmare for teams like Mercedes, Ferrari don't seem to care that their car looks like it's driving on square wheels. While everyone else is complaining, Ferrari are leading the Drivers' and Constructors' Championship. So how are they dealing so much better with the bouncing than everyone else? At Imola, a lot of TV coverage focused on Ferrari of Charles Leclerc. It was the Prancing Horse's home race, and the Tifosi were expecting a huge result from the cars in red. While the Tifosi didn't get what they wanted, we did get to see just how good the Ferrari was despite the continuous bouncing on the straights. When you look at a team like Mercedes and you see the bouncing, you put two and two together and say the bouncing is why they're slow. In Ferrari's case though, this isn't true. There are a few theories as to why this is. You need to know why porpoising is bad to understand why it isn't that bad for Ferrari. Firstly, it can damage the floor, which could cause any number of problems for the car. This one is pretty obvious. Imagine driving around your city and having the bottom of your car constantly banging on the ground. Parts would be falling off everywhere, and fluid would be leaking, and it would just be a complete mess. Secondly, and probably more importantly, it sends a shockwave through the car. It is this shockwave that caused Red Bull to have fuel pump issues in the opening three races. When Max Verstappen had a fuel leak in Australia, it was directly blamed on porpoising likely shaking the part loose. So how have Ferrari managed to mitigate this problem? Ferrari's floor is mounted on a spring. When an F1 car is porpoising, the floor hits the road and causes damage and shakes everything loose. But by putting the floor on springs, Ferrari have reduced the amount of damage done each time the floor hits the road. They haven't managed to stop the problem, but they have come up with a genius way of living with it. And now that they can live with it, they can run their car with a setup that allows them to compete for race wins. For the rest of the grid, let's use Mercedes as an example, they have to change their setup to compensate for the porpoising. So when you hear Andrew Shovlin saying it's ultimately preventing us from running the car where we'd like to run it for optimum performance, you know he's talking about having to make changes to the setup that does not suit the car they've designed. Mercedes have designed their car so it can run really close to the floor. F1 cars run low to the floor because it lowers their center of gravity, which improves stability, and because it improves the aerodynamics of the vehicle. To try and reduce the amount of porpoising and the severity of the damage it causes, Mercedes are having to raise the ride height of their car. It might not be noticeable on the TV coverage unless you have a really sharp eye, but it doesn't take much for it to have an effect. In raising their ride height, they take the car away from the conditions it was designed in, and they reduce the performance of the car. They probably designed it to run best at around 75mm above the ground. They might only be running it 10mm higher than that, but in the F1 world of minuscule margins, it makes a huge difference. Thanks to Ferrari's shock-absorbing floor mounts, they're able to run the car at the height they want to. This means the car can be running closer to what they think is the optimum setup. Don't think this means they don't need to fix the problem, because it still causes performance issues, but it isn't going to ruin their season in the same way it has Mercedes so far. Let us know your thoughts on Ferrari's porpoising solution in the comments below. And while you're down there, please subscribe to F101, and I'll see you in the next video.